Hello and welcome to this very first video in the series of Dungeon Fog. Now, Dungeon Fog is a browser-based map maker and map editor. If you haven't heard about it yet, it means you're not part of our Discord discussions, our Twitter discussions, our Facebook discussions. I, I lose my breath. We've been talking about Dungeon Fog now for quite some time because they are, of course, allies with How to Be a Great GM and WorldAnvil.com, which really means you can do pretty much everything you need to do now in terms of your role playing space all in one space. And I think that's really, really, really fantastic. So today I wanted to introduce you to Dungeon Fog. Now, this is not a technical tutorial on how to use Dungeon Fog. You barely need those because it's such an intuitive system anyway. I really love it because of that. I'm a bit of a technophile, as some of you may or may not know. But um, Dungeon Fog really is impressive. So behind me, you can see a map which my Patreon's got uh, for the month of, I think, uh, September for, for being part of the tiers that get maps and um, it's very, very impressive. And what I think you can see is that there's little light glows and things. Dungeon Fog does it all. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through a very basic map uh, creation process so you can kind of see it. There are Dungeon Fog, of course, tutorials out there that they have done. But this is going to show you how I use narrative in terms of building my structures as well as trying to figure out how to make sure that my map works for what my players are going to be doing and for what I need them to do. So we're going to very quickly just go to new map here. Now, what I like about Dungeon Fog, and this is the same as, say, something like World Anvil, you can tag stuff and you can link stuff together. And there will be a video later on where we take maps from here and we put them into World Anvil so you can see just how seamless the whole thing happens to be. So let's give this a, a name. We're going to call this, let's say, oh, um, let's say Master's Cottage. You have to explain. Excuse my spelling. Master's Cottage. Right. Okay. And then I'll give it a little bit of a description. And that will be um, the Master's Sanctum um, in the, the woods. Now, Dungeon Fog, of course, has only just launched. Um, so there are still many things that are going to be coming out in terms of assets. Functionality wise, it's pretty much all there. It is a subscription based system, but it is also free. So if you go for the free option, that means that you get access to everything that you can do within Dungeon Fog normally, but you can only store three maps, three maps at a time. And you might go, oh, well, I'll just delete a map and create a new one. Absolutely, you can. But the benefit of Dungeon Fog is with its storage, you can take it and keep a map there and then go back to it a month later and just adjust things, tweak things. Maybe the players have moved into Dungeon uh, into Dungeon Fog. Maybe they've moved into a castle that you've designed, like the one behind me, and they've started to knock out walls. They've started to open up the space to make it a little bit more accessible for families. Whatever the case might be, players tend to like to customize things. How amazing would be able to, to hand them a map that doesn't have ink lines where you've scratched out walls and that sort of thing, but have actually got their additions and changes specifically to how they want them. I'm particularly excited about that. So that's the benefit, one of the benefits anyway, of having a subscription is you can store your files on Dungeon Fog for an indefinite period of time and then come back to them and change them as you need to. I also find that's very e simple and easy to do if you've got a game that's coming up and you haven't really got enough time to design a whole new map. You can take one of the older maps, change the colors of the walls, the floor and that sort of thing, and move some walls around, add a courtyard, take out a dungeon, and whatever it is that you need to do. And so that's a lot faster process than starting from scratch. Not that it takes you very long to start from scratch either, unless you're like me, in which case you just get lost in the world of creating this wonderful, wonderful space. So we're going to just uh, type in some keywords here. So let's say cottage, um, let's say uh, magic, uh, magic, it's trying to uh, offer me some words there. Okay, fantastic. Now, setting, of course, we're going to go with fantasy. We could go with sci fi if we wanted to, but we're doing fantasy for now. Uh, grid style is square, 70 pixels. We'll print out at the right size. Map size, of course, how big do we want the map to be? We don't want it to be particularly large. And the distance, five foot per unit. I'll go with that. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we create our map. There's our wonderful Dungeon Fog logo, DGN Fog, or Dungeon Fog as I like to call it. And there is our map. Very, very clear 
clean, very simple. And on the right hand side, left, right, yes, it is. It's well, it's this side here. Uh, you can see we've got our controls. Very simple. It's not a complicated interface. It's not complicated at all. So we're going to create some walls here. Here's our floor and wall option. And we can choose just what the floor looks like to begin with. Now, currently it's set to this default gray stone here, but I think I think it would be better if we chose I want to use it is scratched wood. I think scratched wood would be, 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 be scratched wood would be better. <laughs> How's that for a tongue twister? And the wall doesn't have to be that dark stone. Let's make it. It is a cottage, so let's say a uh, solid dark stone. I think that's quite nice. All right, so solid dark stone it is. And now we can create our walls. So this is our map uh, over here. We can go to show all so we get to see the whole thing. All right, that's absolutely fine. And let's lay out this cottage. Now, why are we having this cottage? What's this cottage for? Let's say in our game that the cottage is the the, the secret sanctum of the master who's going to give our players some wonderful information. Well, I think what we need to do is we need to build in a few traps. We need to make it a little bit more interesting as well as we need to play with our space. So to do that, I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to uh, create a freestanding tower over here. Now each block is, is five foot. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but when I click and I start to move, underneath my cursor is a little counter, one by one. So that's indicating that it's one space, it's two space, that's now 10 foot, uh, 15 foot, 20 foot long. So that's 20 foot room by, let's say, let's make it 25 feet so we can bring that in. We'll do this and we'll close it up like that. So it's a very straightforward room. Now, do you see it automatically adds in the walls? Automatically, it adds in the wooden flooring, making it very, very, very simple, very easy to use. I can, of course, change the opacity of this grid if I wanted to, but I think it makes it quite nice and clear. Now, the reason why I wanted this is because I want our tower to have multiple layers. And I'm going to show you how we're going to do that as well. So this is a standalone tower. The sanctum is actually going to have a tower on the outside and then a central space. Why? Well, just because I think it's going to be cooler. So horses will go between here. So we've got one, two, so that's 10 foot, 15 foot. Is that wide enough for a horse? I think so. That's wide enough for a train track. So it should be wide enough for a horse. Okay. And we're going to bring in the corner of the house down to here. And then we're going to create a stables. Now, I always think that it's important when you're designing designing to think about the space that you're designing for. Um, oh dear, so I've made a mistake there in terms of doing that. Uh, that wall shouldn't be there. So what am I going to do? I'm going to panic. No, I'm not going to panic. I'm just going to press delete and delete these. Uh, let me just do this and select that. And I'm going to select the point and delete the point. It's as simple as that. And I'm going to take that point all the way back to there. There we go. Okay, so we've now got the stables. We're going to carry on building our, our uh, structure here. We said 15 feet out there. So we're going to do this. Have a little corner there for no apparent reason. Architect got bored. And we're going to open out to the front here. Let's give them a bay window. Um, you do not have to study architecture in the slightest to be able to do this as far as I'm concerned. This is just me being waxing lyrical, if you if you like. Okay, so that is our basic structure. That's very, very simple, very straightforward. Um, it's looking good as far as I'm concerned. I think that works quite well. Now, we can then go and add in some props, but before we do that, let's add in a door. So to get into this cottage, we're going to put a door uh, here. We're going to put a double door. Uh, let's say the horses are going to come in on this side. So we're going to put a double door in here. It's literally just dragging and dropping. And then, of course, you need a door across into the space. And so if this is your main sort of um, entertaining room, if you like, um, we're then going to just put in a little set of stairs uh, a little door there. You can see I'm thinking ahead. Now we're going to come to uh, windows. Uh, ground floor windows? No, I think the ground floor should sort of look like a stone structure. Give it a bit of strength in case there's an attack. Um, but we will put some arrow slots uh, just in case. So I'm going to put one there. I'm going to put one there. Um, and maybe sort of one out there. And then one over here and one there. So if anyone sort of breaks in, they can shoot at them. The stable yards, uh, the horses need light, I suppose. It would be a bit unfair to not give them light. 
Um, so they've got they've got uh, arrow slits for lights. Uh, the space tower is not going to have anything because it is in actual fact going to be a dungeon of some kind. I'm, I'm not sure what we're going to do there. All right. So we've now got our doorways. We've got our windows that we needed to. Now we can go and we can decorate. Now, what I particularly like about the way that Dungeon Fog does its interior design, its asset design, is oftentimes they try and load up everything at the same time. And I don't like that because sometimes your browser might be slow, your internet might be slow, and then you spend waiting as it says loading assets loading assets and that sort of thing or you have to download a thousand assets at the same time it just it becomes complicated so what dungeon fog does which i particularly like is that they manage your assets so you can as you can see there's the little swirly wheels as it all starts to to register and look and see what's there what you can do is you can go through and there is so much stuff that you can choose here um closed barrels open barrels water barrels broken barrels you really can go to town i'm going to add Add in a few bits and bobs here because we're going to decorate this kitchen so we're going to need some crates maybe a chest chests are always good we don't need a pile of gold we do need a pile of hay mm, perhaps a stuffed deer's head will give it something i'm going to go for a summoning circle because i've got a plan for our san excuse me for our sanctum um a lit candelabrum is always good uh books pile of books open books fantastic thank you very much uh spider web no he keeps his house clean a round hatch yes great a wooden hatch perfect a cage containing a skeleton why not pile of bones no he's not evil a statue no we don't need that rotten altar dead adventurers no the list just goes on and on and on and on and of course they will be adding to this as well so we've got a bear rug lit torch that's fantastic a brazier uh no 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 braziers uh, today um red carpet yes bed maybe we're going to need that a little bit later on uh picture frame pictures on the walls no we don't but i use these uh, for something else uh cupboard yes uh empty shelf yes bookshelf yes stove yes because we're making bench yes thank you very much bathtub why not square carpet why not uh tree block no empty well well yes we'll need that pile of manure of course you always need to have something around uh pile of dirt we don't need rabbit cage no broken cart pile of rocks gravel banner no i'm just going through the list here looking for stuff uh eviscerated animal oh yeah let's do that um because it can just add to a bit of flavor uh twigs is quite nice staircases spiral or square i think we're gonna go with we don't need no we need square we're not going to go with spiral let's take away a spiral we'll have a ladder just in case we need chairs tables tables galore the kitchen needs a kitchen it needs a forge it needs a laboratory a workbench a study bench an alchemy bench yes just add it all on and then trees of course they're all the trees so i've really just sort of added everything and now what it's doing is it's populated now this these lists here with everything that we've now selected so we've chosen to now add in a lot of things but you don't necessarily have to start that way and i find that particularly particularly useful uh, in terms of managing my assets and managing my time so that i really 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 enjoy so we're going to start with our round hatches wooden hatches um cage containing skeleton so a wooden hatch obviously leads down it leads somewhere so we're going to do that we're going to put one in the kitchen because i think that makes it quite exciting i'm going to put it i'm actually going to put it there now there's a reason why i'm i'm putting it there um and the reason for that of course is that i want the adventurers to find it and then to well actually discover something now before we continue i want to show you the real power of this uh, system and i hope you can see it here is that it keeps track of the rooms. So when I go into the rooms, I've got, you see the highlighting, I've got all of these different rooms which I haven't labeled. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to call this kitchen. Right. And you press enter to, to activate. I'm going to call this stable. Right. Um, and this, of course, is reception. Okay. And then this must be this is our tower so now this is the base of the tower maybe the tower is going to go one level further down which i think it will so this is basically the research room so i'm going to call this the library the library the library all right so now we've got that but if i go even further i go into the kitchen we can now see that within the kitchen i've got this hatch so I can now move this hatch however I like and wherever I like as well uh, or place more of them. And I can, of course, change the rotation. I can change the scaling. I can really do pretty 
pretty much anything that I want to in terms of, of using this particular hatch. Now I can also come to the hatch and move it around a little bit. I can snap to grid if I want to. So if you really wanted to sit exactly on this grid, you can do that. But I can also go in, and I like this one particularly, I can change the color slightly. So let's say, for example, I wanted it to stand out a little bit more. I wanted it to be a bit more obvious. I can really play around and really, really customize it. And I like that because it tells a different story. It doesn't just get lost in the corner there. Of course, I can still change all my walls and all that kind of stuff if I really wanted to. But for me, the, the bottom line is that it, it stays, it stays changeable. And I like that. I really like that. Okay, back to populating our kitchen. Uh, so we've got a wooden hatch down there. Um, I think we don't need anything there. We don't need anything. Oh, well, we do need a round hatch. We need a round hatch. This is too big for my my liking. So I'm going to drop this down to, let's say, 40%. Yes, that's better. And I'm going to put a hatch uh, there. Now that leads into a sewer system. All right. So now as I click, it now loads the image. So no, only now is it actually starting to load the image. So while I'm busy pondering what next I'm going to do, it's loading the image in the background. So that, that hatch um, is not showing up here because we're not in the kitchen now. Um, anymore. Now we are in the stable. So if I go to the stable, now we'll see the round hatch highlighting up there. So it's all, again, it's just designed to be really easy and really, really, really simple for you to use. Okay, great. So we're done with that. Let's go to containers um, and let's put in a water barrel in the kitchen because, well, you need water. And I think as you walk into the kitchen, it would be nice to be able to wash your hands uh, of that. And then we're going to need I believe we're going to need our various tables. Uh, where are our tables? Furniture. Um, no. Uh, decoration could be. I shouldn't have closed all these down. Usually I don't close them down, but I thought for cleanliness. Here we go. Stove. Definitely need a stove. Okay. And so we're going to rotate that 90 degrees. Now, uh, oh, sorry, uh, we're going to rotate that 180. And we want to put it there. No, no, 270. What I really like about being able to freeform in terms of the angle uh, is quite, I'm just trying to design this interior now, is quite literally, I can make this any shape, any space I want. And I really like that. I found that really, really powerful as opposed to kind of getting stuck with, oh, you can only change it to this angle. I really can make it um, any, any shape that I want, any angle, off angle, um, which I, I really appreciate because for me, that gives the, the, the map a lot more authenticity. Um, it really does. Um, it makes it feel like someone actually lives here rather than, oh, it's been designed very specifically for X purpose. Um, so now we've got a table. All right, so there's the, the hearth uh, where you'd, you'd cook and that sort of thing. Um, if we put the cooking table over here, I suppose, that could be quite useful. Um, I don't have a problem with that. And then we're going to put a round table over here because you do your cooking. And then if you are the stable boy or if you are the groundsman, I suppose, uh, chairs I like to always put at off angles, even if it's just sort of five degrees or so. Um, simply because people push their chairs away. They never sort of put them back properly. And again, you see, this is what I like is that I'm literally just going through the... Uh, the motions, uh, there won't be a chair there, I don't think. I'm just going through the angles and let's make this 290 uh, and just sort of plopping them down and, and just create such a nice, I think anyway, um, layout it makes it it makes it feel more like someone's actually lived here than, than, than not. Okay, I want to add in a carpet. Let's add in a carpet. Uh, we've got a round carpet somewhere, I think. Um, let's plop down just to make it feel a little bit more welcoming, uh, as well as to slightly hide that hatch. Um, where should we put a carpet? Uh, let's put the carpet. Let's put the carpet in the reception room, shall we? Square carpet in the reception room. Yes. 
no okay forget the carpet carpet is is it's a carpet um now what we need to do bear rug can we put a bear rug in it? i think a bear rug could be quite cool a uh, little bear sort of like there so as you walk in from the stables you wipe your feet yes I like that. I like that. These are the kind of conversations that I have with myself, as you well know, if you've watched these videos before. But there's our bear rug and we're quite happy with that. OK, now, one thing that I really like about Dungeon Fog, and it's not unique, but it's very easy, is that you can add light sources and they look beautiful. They really do look beautiful. So there's a torch there. I'm going to put a torch on that wall over there. Uh, wrong angle, so I need to go in the opposite direction. Uh, where, 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 let's try that one. No, still no good. My this is this is where I really wish my my angles were better. Uh, Two hundred, something like that. Yeah, that'll work. Okay, so we've got a torch over there and there. So it's a very happy little space, isn't it? Very happy. And um, we'll put a torch at that door as you walk in. And then we want a torch next to the fire hearthstone type of place. I think that's more than enough light uh, everywhere. This is a cheery part of the tower. Um, the horses are going to need a light because they've got to read at night. Um, so we're just going to bang this in quickly. Is that right? Um, da -da -da -da. Yeah, that'll work. Um, let's plop that in there. Okay, now I use these picture frames actually to create horse stalls because I think it works quite well. So the horses are going to come in there and it's not a very well designed uh, stable at all, uh, at all at all. So uh, it is what it is. But uh, this is big enough, I would say, because a horse, is it five foot wide? No, definitely not. So we can put two horses in there. Not a problem. So they're both going to go in on either side there and we can put in another horse here and there's still plenty of room for them to sort of walk around and move around and that sort of thing. I remember we said we were going to use hay somewhere. So there's our pile of manure, which uh, is a little bit big. So we're going to scale this down to, let's say, 50%. So it's a bit smaller. So we've got a pile of manure just down there, which I think is pretty awesome. That will um, sort of make it feel a little bit more like stables, I suppose you could say. Um, then what else can we throw in here? Can we throw a chair in there? No, I don't think we need a chair in there. Um, we've got a well, but that's going outside. Yes, I think that... Oh, and piles of hay. We need piles of hay because horses eat hay. That's usually what they, what they eat. And then, of course, I'm going to just... Um, go through my paces here it's a bit silly to rotate a circular structure i know but uh it, it it's 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 just my sort of i can do it and it is it's easy to do all right so now we've got our little stable with only one little light but we do need a light on the outside because when you're coming home at night after having you know gone to the pub and that sort of thing you you don't want to struggle to find the keys to the uh stable yard so we're just going to do that very quickly two little lights there maybe we'll put a light on the outside you know so it's quite homely quite quite nice that way i think quite nice yeah all right uh reception room needs to have a little something uh as you walk in uh let's give it let's give it oh we had some pots sorry i wanted to add in a pot or two so it says here urn but i'm going to actually just um pretend that it's a pot I'll put, um, let's say, 70%, so it's a bit smaller. <clears throat> and I'm going to put that over there in the corner because that's a hatchway that uh, should remain relatively uh, secret. Uh, you know, the players should have to work to find it. We'll put a closed pot there um just to make it feel a little bit more interesting um and then a cooking pot i don't see why not uh let's put that on the table now what i particularly like about dungeon forge fog forge dungeon forge world world and will light up the forge dungeon fog light up the map um i i don't know what they they they're um war cry is i suppose it's let's get designing interior design for the win so um now when we go into the kitchen if i look at this pot you see here are all of the items that are in my room and they all highlight so beautifully i can take this pot and if i drag it i can put it underneath the table and then it vanishes because of course it's all focusing around height now originally i thought oh you know that's just so 
painful. I mean, that's really difficult. That, that, that just means I have to go and do more admin. But what it actually does is it allows you to control your scenes a lot better. And you can come and add in stuff later. And it doesn't get lost or hidden behind other things. So I think that's a really powerful, powerful tool that they've got going there. OK, so they're going to walk in here. And they're going to see that this is the welcoming room. So I want a stuffed deer to greet them as they walk in, because that's my sense of humor. and. Um, I think that looks kind of cool. We're going to throw in a carpet, we said. We wanted a carpet. Let's um, irritate people and do that. And um, we don't need a well. Well, we need a well, but we need a well. Le oh, well, let's put the well. Let's put the well in. Mm, there we go. We've got the well, which is right next to the kitchen. That'll make the cook happy. Um, then we need, let's say, a table. Uh, we're not going to have a round table because this is a reception. So this is people arriving and being greeted. You know, welcome to the cottage. Uh, don't know why you're here. There's nothing to see here. We we're quite quiet folk. Uh, we 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 have nothing really to to show or hide. Um, so we'll do that. And I'm just looking for. I thought we added in a table. And I thought it would be there. Well, let's go and have a look. Is there a table that we uh, didn't add? I know there's a big, a big table. Now, of course, obviously, with programs like this, where there are lots of assets, and I don't think that there is any real way to ever resolve it, especially if you're lazy like me and you kind of like to work with only one hand. Um, is that there is inevitably going to be lots of assets. There we are, you sneaky, sneaky sneak. Uh, and basically, it boils down to just becoming familiar with the assets and going, well, yes, there's lots of assets, and uh, this is where they are, and this is where I access them. And you commit them to memory. It doesn't take long at all uh, to do that. Um, so that is something that you're just going to have to get get the hang of. Um, like I said, though, they do have a really nice resource management uh, tool that I particularly like. So, um, yeah, it's not it's not the end of the world. Let's be honest. Uh, let's put this chair here. So this is where you come and consult with the uh, the master. Let's say so. That's let's say that's his uh, game. That's his shtick. So we're going to do that. We're going to throw a book down. And uh, let's uh, we need more table, please, my lord. We need a bigger table. We don't have a bigger table, but I've got a round table that I can make smaller because, you know, carpentry. So we'll put a round table. You know, I don't really like the round table. You see, the problem is if you are like me and you enjoy designing interiors, you could get stuck here for quite some time. The actual castle itself didn't take me long to draw. What took me long to draw was design. Well, if I put the desk here, then he can read by the light of that window over there, etc., um, etc. Et and that's that. I, I, I will admit that's probably a failing on my behalf. But I've got this wonderful program, so why not use it? Um, why not use it? So there we go. We've got a little thing there. And of course, we can go in. Absolutely, we can go in. We can select our candle and we can change the uh, colors uh, that the uh, candle stick is if we wanted to. Um, we can change how bright it is or dull it is, depending on, on what we, we want it to look like. Is it green flame? And of course, we can go in and we can change the lighting as well as we come down to the light source here. We can make it more orange, or in this case, let's make it a mystic green because it's, um, and we'll increase its range to make it feel like you're visiting the master. Yes, I quite like that. All right, so we've got this green. So, I mean, just look at the power of that. Look at, and that was just click, 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 done. Thank you very much for playing. I really, really, really like this program. Okay, so there's our master's uh, sanctum as far as our players are concerned. Let's come down here now to this room here. I wanted some stairs because 
Uh, well, we're first going to throw in a chest in here. Now, this is something that I like to do um, with players all the time. Is you throw in a chest because they're going to stop. They're going to try and pick it. They're going to try and open it. They're going to do all sorts of weird and wonderful things to it. Um, and that uh, often slows them down. It gives them something to work on for a little bit. It gives you time to think about what's coming up next as well. Now, I'm putting a summoning circle here, even though this is meant to be just his library. So there's a bookshelf here. So I'm going to throw a bookshelf there. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And uh, we're going to throw one in this corner here. And uh, I wanted stairs. Uh, we had those here. Uh, stairs going down into the dark. They're very nicely done as well. Look at that, going all the way down into the dark. And then we want stairs coming up as well. So there's stairs going up. Now, if I look at that summoning circle, it's not, it's not ideal, is it? It's not ideal. It's not ideal in terms of its location. So we're going to go into our room. And instead of trying to click on that, I'm just going to go summoning circle. Hello. Hello, summoning circle. Thank you very much. And um, do we like it where it is? No, we want to move it. Uh, yes. So let's move it. Uh, just a bit over to there. Okay, great. And um, yes, happy with that. I think that works. Um, good. Now I'm going to turn that off, actually, so we don't see that anymore. All right, uh, so that's where that is. That's this little room. No, it's not yet complete because I'm not... You know, something that I try and do when I'm designing rooms and things is... If I'm going to be designing a map like this, and then I'm going to give it up to the players and say, right, here's a map for you. Take it, run with it, do whatever it is that you want to do with it. If I'm going to be designing a room like that, I want them to be able to look at that room and to understand what's in there almost straight away. I don't want them to have to kind of go, what's in that room? So I like to do this. It's also, you know, when you're designing maps and things, especially if other people are potentially going to be using your maps, um, if you're doing it for a convention, for example, um, it's always, I think, good practice to, to give a hint as to the reason for the room, the contents of the room. Now, I mean, you might use this to design maps for a computer game, for example, um, in which case then absolutely I need to be able to look at this room and go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is definitely, definitely a library of some sorts because there's some books lying around on bookshelves. Yes, this is a library of some kind. I can, I can see that. Um, I can see it and I can understand it and I can recognize it. And that I think is very, very important as well uh, to do that. Now, here's a good example where we've got these books, these books. Now we've got a pile of books over there as well. So I want them to look different. I want them to feel different as if they are, are a different set of books. So it doesn't feel like I've just sort of copied and pasted it 15 times over. And bingo, now it's it's different colored books. Sure, it's still the same sort of logos and stuff, but I think that is that is a really powerful, powerful tool. Now, something that I haven't looked at yet is levels. So this level, we're going to call this level ground level. Now, this is where I really like the program. So this is ground level and enter. Let us make, uh, well, we haven't finished yet. Sorry, sorry, I'm still leaping ahead. We haven't finished yet. Uh, let us just go quickly and uh, do some garden design because we haven't done that yet so i'm going to open that down and here's some fir trees now i wanted to show you another tool that i i really like as well in so far as we have the option here to randomize the rotation the scale and we can control all those parameters look at that I really, really like it. So we can make this, say, 250. So it's not going to go bigger than 250, and it's not going to go smaller than, let's say, 50. So we don't want it to be smaller than 50. Rotation is absolutely fine. You can mirror the horizontal. You can mirror the vertical as well. You can just go mad, computer, when we are putting this together. So we don't have a lot of space for, for, for trees and things. So I'm going to do one there. I'm going to do one there. There's another big one that's trying to offer me, which is absolutely fine. So we've got a grove of trees around there. Now, that's a fir tree. So let's get a, a dark fir tree. Same parameters are still set. Um, OK, so we've got that. Uh, let's say that there's a bit of a pathway down there. We don't know where it's going. We haven't added anything into it yet. Um, and I'm just going to bounce between 
dark fir trees and light fir trees to give us a, a, a differentiator, if you like, between, uh, and just visually, it just makes it look nicer, doesn't it? Um, so I'm going to do that, that, that. We've got some trees there. Thank you very much. Uh, a shrubbery! We need a shrubbery. Yes, so we'll put a shrub there. Now, why did I put a shrub there? Let's say, for example, that this is now a case of a heist. You have set up the mission that the players are going to try and break into this dungeon area. You need to give them places where they can hide. You need to give them places that they can work with so that they they literally can say, right, I sneak in the bushes up to this point or up to that point, or I do this, I do that. However, however you expect them to get there, although there's arrow slits for potentially guards to look out, I'm realizing that we are covering them up, which is, I get, again, I don't have a problem with that because I want my players to succeed. So the arrow slits maybe were originally installed by someone who was a bit more paranoid, perhaps someone who, who didn't trust um his his fellow neighbors uh for 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 whatever reason and uh so so put in those arrow slits and things um and yes all right so so we have i have forgotten uh to put lights in to the tower down here and is that a problem no it's not a problem i turn off randomization first because otherwise um i'm going to get into trouble and uh, I'm going to go to my layers and to my rooms and to my... You don't have to do this. I just do this out of habit so that I remember where I am and what I'm supposed to be doing. And I'm going to add in a light source there and there. And then we're going to rotate it 180 degrees so that I can put in a light source as you come down the stairs. And that's it. All right. And uh, no, there's not going to be any light sources there. Okay, fantastic. Right. Um, so if I to look at this, I don't think that's a bad map for uh, 30 minutes of handiwork. And it would be a lot faster if I wasn't talking through it. And if I had sort of had a bit of a sit down, I'm not completely finished yet, so don't let me lie. I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, uh, go to the pen tool here, and I'm going to choose brown clay as my option. And I've got my thickness values for my for my tool. I can make it bigger or smaller. And you're going to see what I'm going to do is we now need the pathway that leads leads to I'm going to do a little, uh, that's going to come in from somewhere. I don't know where that's going to come in from. All right. And we need a little pathway that's going to lead through to the stables. Now, what I really like about Dungeon Fog is that it keeps track of where you are. So I can draw here on this road. I can draw right over to the doorway and it doesn't spill out into this room. It doesn't spill into the room, which I like. I can then go into the room and sort of just sort of dab it a little bit, just to give it a bit of an effect, really. Make it feel a little bit more like it's a used space. And it won't draw anywhere else. So I really like that function. It allows me to, to, to keep my colors, if you like, uh, separated. Uh, keep them individual, um, which, which I think is really powerful. Um, I'm just going to sort of brush in some different colors here. Of green, basically, it's just more green, uh, and I think that's really useful. And it, it's you know, to to differentiate was so easy. I literally just selected the the texture that I wanted. Uh, dirt with old leaves, for example, is this one, which I quite like. Um, sort of leaves leaves gather in corners and things, and and just sort of dirt it up a bit. Um, it 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 makes it feel like you've paid a bit of attention to the map, and it didn't. I mean, it hasn't added very much but very clearly we can see there's the roadway and it leads you into town okay so now it's 35 minutes 35 minutes to design something that looks like this now there's something that's even more powerful is that we can then take this and uh, we can add notes to it if we wanted to we can add notes just specifically for the library 
So in the library, we can say, um, let's, uh, well, we can, we, can, we can write whatever we want. I'm not going to go through describing everything in these, in these rooms for you. I'm gonna, I'm, 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 that's not the purpose of today's video. But what I wanted to now show you is when we go into layers, into levels, I apologize, and we go down a layer. So what is underneath the ground level? What is underneath the ground level, of course, is the basement. Right. And what I particularly like, particularly, specifically, emphatically like, love, absolutely adore, is that we can see an outline of the old map underneath it. And I, I really like that. So I'm going to go with natural stone for, uh, for underneath here. Now, I put in the hatchway here and I put in the sewer for a very specific reason. The sewer is going to lead down this way. So I'm going to uh, wall type. I'm going to change to cave and I'm going to choose from here. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there and then come there and here. And I'm going to do this. OK, there's my nice beveled edged cave entrance because the sewers are going to wash down into here and then wash out um, elsewhere. Now, I've actually made a mistake here. I wanted to. Uh, so let's go back to layers. We're in rooms now. We have an unnamed room. OK, so I'm going to select this unnamed room and I'm actually going to drag these points uh, off of the map so that they can come in through here, through the grate and get into the building. I always want them to, to have accessibility, right? Um, so now we go from cave, we now go to um, uh, below ground. So now we're underground and we're gonna add in these rooms that I um, have planned for, um, which is going to, let's say, extend to there. And there, okay, so there's a room um, which uh, it's going to be screaming at me just now saying, what is this room for? And we have a set of stairs over here, don't we? So we've got to take into account what's happening down here. So this is another room that uh, we're going to add in underneath the tower. All right, they are connected there. And then because we can, let's have a nice long passageway out there and then we come out here and we create another room over here and we just close that up very simple very easy i love it um and because it will definitely slow the players down let's do a room there all right so now we have our various rooms we can now come in here, da, 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 back to levels, We're in, uh, stage. Um, now we can come in here and start to populate as we as we might need to. Um, all right, so let's look at our, let's go through our various rooms. So this is our sewer tunnel. Okay. And this is our, uh, let's say, what would we call this? You get into this from the kitchen. So let's call this the um, basement. And then this is our summoner's room. And this is just corridor. And this is, let's say, dungeon. And this is, say, treasure room. Yes, I know what you're thinking. It's not smart to have your treasure room next to your dungeon. However, if I was the archmage meister of this tower, when I took you prisoner, I would very, very, very obviously show you, as you're walking along the corridor, that's the sewers. I wouldn't try and escape out that way. They're awfully slippery and you're likely to break your neck. And that's a dead end. 
That's what I would say. And and hopefully that would dissuade them from going down the dead end. I don't know. Would it? Would it? Probably not. Probably not. I'm just being optimistic. Okay, uh, let's go back here because what I wanted to do is I want to show you now um, the fact that um, this, this um, floor for the cave... I'm not convinced is right because it doesn't look any different from the actual floors of the rooms. That's not a problem. A, I can scale it so it's bigger if I wanted to so that it doesn't feel so unnatural perhaps. Or B, if I select this room, I can go in and I can actually change it. Um, so I'm gonna change the sewer to brown clay and then these rooms make more sense. And it makes more sense that this is a, an exit point as well. And of course, I'm going to come into this room and I'm going to go brush check texture. And um, let's see, what have we got here? Swirling lava. Yeah, all right. I don't see a water texture uh, anywhere. So I'm going to go with swirling lava. And we're going to go. Blah, 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 blah. And you have to make the sound effect. It's like a rule. Okay, now why did I go with swirling lava, do you think? Do you think? I think you know why. It's because I can go into here and I can change it up. I can change its color just like that. Is it changing? Have I got the right one? Yes, I do. And bingo. I've now got my swirling lava which to me looks like water i hope you can see that on the map maybe that's too big uh, let's go back to brown clay let's change the thickness um, and um, shape this water a bit better oh this is um, still set to two <laughs> um, being brown clay or the wrong color anyway so now I can come in and tweak right and to me that now looks like a trail of water literally leaving this this space uh, doorways let's put in some bars over here there's some bars because well they can't just walk into the cottage I mean that would be insane right um, so we'll do that we'll do a door here we'll do a door here and we'll do a door here now of course Dungeon Fog has only just launched, quite literally, this the week that this video is going out. So there are some things that may still be missing that you would like. Those will be added in time. So look out for those. They really are going to 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 change this up a bit. Um, right. So now we have come down the stairs. So we're going to need to go and load up. I don't know if we did or not. I'll just check that ladder because. There won't be a ladder underneath the grate uh, that leads to the floor above. Um, that would just be silly. Oh, we do have ladder loaded up. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so I can close that up. All right, so we, um, we don't need a ladder underneath the grate, the sewer grate, I suppose you could call it. Um, we don't need one here, for example, uh, because, well, why would there be one? It just doesn't make sense. But getting from the kitchens down here, I think we definitely need a ladder that will allow us to go up and down uh, into the storeroom. The storeroom, we're going to put a table because as you come down, you might have stuff that you want to prep or change or do you know whatever it is you want to do. We now need this to look like it is a storeroom. So let's grab, uh, let's go with boxes. Boxes is always fun. And we're gonna randomize the rotation of the boxes. We're not gonna randomize the scale of the boxes. And we can handle that as well. So um, let us firstly drop this to, let's say 80%. So the boxes are not so big. And now we just fill up with boxes once it's loaded up. 
uh, let's make that zero so that it plays off of zero. Okay. And I can now stack boxes to my heart's content um, and know that they're all nice and, and random. Um, let's put some boxes in front of these crates so that people will have to look for them with an open box. If you please, let's make that say 80. Put some open boxes there. Maybe a broken box can go down there. Let's, 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 yeah, let's put a broken box just there. Um, so they can go through these if they really wanted to. Um, they can knock themselves out. You've got to assume that they would. Uh, put an urn on the table. Um, they have come to the trouble of climbing down here. So I often believe that throwing in a chest, not a chest of that scale, but throwing in a chest could be could be quite nice. So there's a little chest, a little chest on the table as you come down. You can put some silver knives and forks in there or, or, or whatever it is that you, you might desire. Um, all right, so that's, uh, that's there. Um, what's our unnamed room? Oh, corridor, I forgot to press enter. In my haste corridor enter okay great stuff let's um handle this uh, summoning room now very quickly and for that we want a summoning circle and we want it to be at say 120 now my idea when i put the first one in and this is why i like seeing the transparency through is that the players need to work out that these summoning circles work across the levels. So they summon through the levels of the building. It's an idea that I had that allows the, the mage to move quickly through the levels perhaps, but also at the same time, it allows the, um, the, the, the mage to summon bigger monsters than they normally would, um, perhaps. Uh, I don't know. It was an idea that I had. Um, so now these would be stairs going up. because of course they're going up now to the uh, previous level and those stairs are facing the wrong way. So it's easy, 180, enter. Now they're facing the right way. So you go down the stairs coming down, you go up the stairs coming up. And um, so we're sorted there. And let's put a water barrel down here because summoning is tough business. And uh, then I need a good old-fashioned bookshelf for those arcane books so that the uh, casters get really excited. Okay, we'll put one there. Oh, I've still got random on. Whoops. Let's get rid of that before it causes grief. And uh, let's put... Uh, let's put uh, another... Let's put a studying desk down here as he studies the effects of paranoia and fear on his subjects. And he's going to need a chair, which is 180. Let's make it 184. Let's go back to chair, sorry. I uh, hit the wrong button on my mouse there. Chair, 185 or 187. And we'll pop the chair in there. Okay, all very good and well. Um, I don't think we need a library table there, but we could put some books down so we can show what this room is. And of course, they do need a reward for having got here, I think anyway. So I plonk down a nice big chest. That's a 10 foot wide chest. So that's great. They've got their stairs. They've got that, that, that. Oh, yes. This is why these are weird. It's because I had random on when I was doing the stairs. So it's just a case of pressing delete. And um, coming back to our stairs going up. And this we said was 180. Plop our stairs down there. Okay, that's great. That's definitely the wrong angle. That's better. <laughs> you agree? 
I hope so. Um, right, so uh, the stairs come down. You come into this. You sort of do a U turn to come around. That's absolutely fine. What do we need to add? We need to add lights, 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 lights. Um, it's almost everywhere actually. So we're going to throw in a light there. We're going to put in. Um, and uh, you know, some some people like to to put lights in. They kind of go through the light, 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 light. So you put lights in wherever you're going to have lights. I'm not of that persuasion. I prefer to sort of put lights where where you'd probably have them. So in this space, I don't see why you'd have lots of lights. I think you'd probably have one light. Wouldn't go for more than that. Okay, so we're nearly done. Um, moving through here. And that's what we don't have. All right, well beds we haven't put beds in yet so uh i'll have to add some beds in but that's not a problem okay um so we've got our corridor i'm not going to do anything on the corridor actually uh oh wait a minute what we could do is we could put uh well we had some we've got door there yeah i think we're just going to close it off Let's just do this. I'm building on top of an existing corridor. It becomes part of that corridor. So now I can put bars in here uh, where it needs to be. The door is still there. So there's bars there now as well. So it just makes it a little bit more difficult. So it's not just a walk in the park um, as, as, as uh, it might seem. Then we do have our cages with skeletons in them, I think. Um, we can put an eviscerated animal in the corner. It's been used as a torture device of some kind. Uh, waterboarding, maybe? No, 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 let's not go that far. We will, we will put a bench in, because you get tired. You do get tired of um, sort of torturing people. You, you get, you need, you need your, you need your rest. You do need your rest. Um, okay, dokes. so we need not an anvil, but we need oh, an iron maiden. Yeah, let's add an iron maiden. We do have a cage there. I oh, it's under dungeon, that's right. We'll put some shackles. Uh, let's put a rotten corpse, and that's it. That's all we need. Um, so doo -doo 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 -doo. up to dungeon, iron maiden. That's always fun, isn't it? torture in your games do you use it is it something that you avoid something that makes you nervous or is it something that uh, you genuinely threat threaten characters with i'll never forget i had um a tiefling once who was tortured by a rather nasty elf and uh, the torture involved cutting the tiefling's tail off and uh, what it did, which I particularly enjoyed with the player, was that it, he literally acted as if he had lost his leg um, and sort of walked around very mopey and definitely wanted revenge against the, the elf, which was fantastic. I really liked, really liked that. Uh, as well as, as um, it became part of his, his sort of character's embarrassment that he, he had these missing bits to him and he wasn't complete until he until he got it back which i really appreciated i thought he uh, he did a great job uh, role playing that and um it gave us a great a great uh, adventure opportunity uh, now you don't get light next to you or maybe you should get light next to you do you get light next to you do you put light next to your prisoners so they can burn themselves no no, we don't do that, but we also are not stupid. We don't um we don't put light anywhere nearby uh where the prisoners will be. We'll light the room quite nicely so we can see what's going on. We don't want any surprises. And this corridor is going to have some lights in it as well. No surprises there. And I will I know I said I wasn't going to put a light in there, but I'm putting a light in there. You can just deal with it um right and then final room final final room is uh we said the treasure room and we're gonna have to go here the let's add in um uh, armor rack a sword uh weapon rack is always fun 
Mm, I'm not going to put a mimic in because that's just silly. And we'll do that. And I want the water puddle now because we're there. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Just load it all in. Load it all in, my lord. Uh, the water puddle is going to get thrown down here to remind me that there's a, 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 a hatch above. Pile of gold. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I am a mad wizard and I leave my gold in piles because that's how I believe they should be kept. Anyway, visually, it's quite nice, isn't it? Um, so we'll do that. We'll do a closed urn, which is where the coins were, but then they got knocked over and it's, oh, it's just so much effort to pick them back up again. We'll put in that suit of magic armor. We'll put in a weapons rack because sometimes you don't know what your players uh, want or need or, you know, it's, it's always useful to give yourself a weapon rack, a generic weapons rack, which will contain something of value. Let's throw a... Oh, it's a hand and a half. No, no, it's just the curse that makes it look like it's a hand and a half. Um, we'll select that and I was boring. I uh, should have rotated it off angle. And then the last thing that we need is some lights. Dee, dee, dee. Now, I have done in my past my checkered dark past um, I have done videos on drawing maps on the fly I would not recommend using this for doing that in terms of oh crikey I need to do a map whilst my adventurers are exploring it I wouldn't do that now the reason for it is because these maps look so beautiful I think it's overkill you don't have to go that far on the other hand, you spend a lot of time looking for assets and that can really slow down your concentration. I mean, it's taken me now an hour to get two levels worth of, of map and you'd have to print them out or share them with your players if you're online, which is not a problem, I suppose. But uh, I prefer the slickness of, of hand drawing in this particular instance. So uh, if you do like to use maps, then you can certainly go this route. Um, okay, so that is the... Um, that's that level. Now, if I go back up here, immediately it sort of swaps back up to, to this level. I can go down into the basement if I wanted to. Um, so upper level, lower level. Uh, upper level, I've got one more layer to do. So bear with me. Bear with me. And um, just select this one. Okay, so now I can see it. And this is called the... Um, first floor in Japan it would be called the second floor um, in South Africa we call the first floor the floor above the ground floor so we had the ground floor and we have first floor so it's an interesting cultural difference that I didn't know about first floor all right so there we go first floor and um, yeah it was it was just interesting to 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 learn that uh, difference uh, we're going to go with uh, wood again because I like the wood it looks good and the top floor is going to be made out of wood as well um, let's go with that one because the top floor now of course is something a little different to indicate that we're definitely on the ground floor now so here we go once more met feeling as they would say going to change up our plan a little bit we're going to have more of an overhang than we did before okay let's just make sure that that's definitely definitely in the right place yes it is okay and we're going to have so when you arrive you're actually going to go underneath this and you'll see that the tower is definitely, well, it's definitely uh, got height to it. You don't necessarily know about the underside. But um, yes, that definitely to me feels, it certainly feels a lot better. Okay, and so now I'm going to just run through the usual paces, uh, throwing in doors and things um, to the uh, tower. And uh, I do have one correction uh, that I need to make. Well, I need to make a few actually. Firstly, I'm going to chalk this off so it's a separate um, 
room there so they're separated um, I will do that first uh, then I'm going to go back to the ground floor because I need to add in a set of stairs going up because otherwise these poor people can't go up so what I'm going to do um, is find my stairs there we go going up stairs up and I'm going to put them that would be very awkward wouldn't it that would be very awkward as well so let's put them here and we're going to change it up 90 degrees uh, 180 degree 270 degrees so you go up here right so there's my stairs going up now I go to first floor and I have my stairs at 270 going down Great. I need to come over here. Oops. And drop in my staircase here. But I think this is at zero. Let's just check that's going up. Nope. So it needs to be at 180. And that's going down. Right. So sorted absolutely 100% off we go fantastic now to our actual rooms of course I haven't labeled any of these so let's start with uh, the very beginning this is this is corridor then this is our sleeping room and uh, this is our mage room and this is our uh, let's call it well this is actually the bedroom all right great good uh, windows 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 most certainly we want windows where are they windows where for art thou a window of mine we don't need any of that um, probably none of that either oh the hell are my windows oh they're in a different folder <laughs> so uh, we'll throw in some windows uh, there actually you know what let's make this a nice a nice cozy overhang so we've got lots of windows that look out over this wonderful view, creating a very nice light room there. And we'll do that and that. This is a lovely little cottage, actually. Um, very nice cottage. And that. And that. And if you have stayed awake throughout this whole video, and I'm hoping that you have, I will see if I can get the web goblin, double windows here, to share this on our um, website. So head along over to www.greatgamemaster.com and uh, you'll see an option there for downloads, I think it's called, I stand to be corrected, but uh, you can then find these maps and you can use them if you like. If you don't like, that's fine as well. You don't have to use them. I won't, I won't take too much events. Um, but yes, it's always, I think anyway, always nice to, um, yeah, put a door in there. Always nice to, to have some maps you can play around with. Uh, of course, my Patreons get, uh, maps every month, uh, more than just maps actually, um, maps, NPCs, all sorts of fun goodies as well as map as well as modules which you can add to your games and things um to 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 say thank you for them supporting the channel but even just watching this video is supporting the channel so thank you uh, for for making it this far um let's add in some beds now all right so let's think about this we've got a stable lad who's going to sleep in the stables traditionally that's where they always used to sleep then we've got at least a cook and then we've got the mage himself 
let's say they're husband and wife. Um, I think that's only fair uh, to say that. Um, so, yeah, we're going to put them. That's their doorway there. So I'm going to say that they've got. And let's do that. I think this is the right one. Um, vertical is horizontal. No. That's what I wanted it to do. Oh, let's just do this then. Oops. No, it's still not doing it. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'm just being I'm just trying out something to see what the system does. We don't oh, no, don't do it. It did it. It did it. I deleted the room, but there's an undo button. Look at that. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, so there's a double bed for them to sleep in um, because they can. And uh, let's give them a chest again because they need to put their clothes somewhere. Um, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da a cupboard or two uh, blocking the window. Don't be uncivilized. There's windows everywhere. Who put all these windows in this place, I ask you? Um, but we don't have a window there, so we can certainly put a cupboard in there, or we can put clothing or whatever it is that we particularly want. We're going to put in a carpet because it gets drafty. Now, notice here the carpet is um, above the bed. You can see the tassel is just sticking over it. So, again, just coming in here, dragging it. No, you're going to the bottom. All right, so we've got our carpet, which I'm going to change colors on because I can. And we're going to do that and then come back to room decoration. I think if we... Oh, there's a ambulance in the background. They're very polite here in Japan as they're speeding to go and save someone's life. They drive past uh, traffic lights and... Um, they have these big announcement announcements that they are driving through, so everyone's to please pay attention. So you really know where they're going, and they certainly do get there in time, which is wonderful. Okay, so there's a table, and again, we need our wonderful little chair, which we're going to say is 23. Okay, good. And then I'm going to have an alchemy desk here for the wife. I think she's going to use it to um, apply her makeup. I think that's quite a nice um, take on uh, alchemy. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll get into trouble for that. Um, but uh, we'll do that, 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 that. That's done. That's the room there. Thank you for playing. Let's put in our... Oh, I wanted a wash tub because there's nowhere else for them to wash. Now, I know this sounds silly, but if you think about the number of times that you've watched... A movie or something where the wash tub has been central to a death, a murder, an NPC discussion. Um, I think you'll find is quite significant. So, I I, um, I like to to throw them in there, and uh, you never know. I mean, this this could very well double up if you if you're a bit skeptical uh, in terms of of. Um, you know what you're going to use this for or maybe you sort of say well it's it's all very nice and well but um i uh, i i i don't need a, a mage tower well that's absolutely fine there is nothing stopping you and that's that's what i love about this program is there's nothing stopping you from just converting and going right well this is not a it's an inn uh, it's a very small inn um and you whip out some of the the beds and things and you 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 or you put in more beds and and uh you're golden so 
again, I absolutely, I cannot, cannot tell you how much I, I really enjoy this program. And it's not because, you know, I, I it's not because it, we have an affiliation with the program. We have an affiliation with them because the program is so awesome. Um, it's not that I'm saying the program is awesome because we have an affiliation with them. And, you know, when I was in school, we would draw maps by hand. And um, uh, today of the recording happens to be my birthday. And a friend of mine from school phoned me up and he said, you know, uh, we were chatting about things and I was mentioning this amazing software. And he said, you know, it's so lucky that it wasn't there when we were young and back in school and we used to walk 20 miles barefoot through the snow whilst eating glass, all that nonsense. You know, it, it, it's so lucky that this program wasn't around because we would have just got lost making thousands and thousands of maps in the program. And he's absolutely right. That's exactly what we would have done because map making I find it so relaxing so therapeutic I mean you you just need to watch and look at the number of um, videos that I put out on map making and uh, to to know that so uh, for me it's a real joy it's a real pleasure to to be able to do this um, and the program just makes it so, you know, sometimes you get programs, you get all excited and you go, yes, this is fantastic. I can't wait for, for this to, to release. And then it comes out and you're like, oh, but why didn't they do this? Why didn't they do that? Um, part of our alliance is that I have the ear of the designer. So I can say, listen, <coughs> please, I need a this or I need a that. At the moment, there's not a lot that I've I've sort of found very lacking um you know so so uh, and, and i mean this is just that it's launched there's so much more coming out um so that's 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 for me why this is a really awesome awesome space an awesome program um to use uh, so it's got so we've got such a nice window there we really really would be we would be doing an injustice to interior design everywhere if if we didn't put in something like this. Now, I've just finished watching um, a, a TV show, which I think I can mention. I think it's, 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 there's no spoilers here. Um, the TV show was a, um, uh, it was a bunch of interior designers getting together uh, and they had to design rooms and, and room challenges and things. And I think, you know, uh, and of course, there's a competition element and they've got to do this and they, they've got to do that. And, um, you know, I look at this and I go, you know what? We could do exactly the same thing. We really could do exactly the same thing with this um, dungeon fog where where it's it's a case of, all right, you've got 22 minutes to design something. Uh, or 27 minutes or however you know whatever whatever time frame we we, we really want to give it um, off you go and just to see what what people come up with and and how they 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 work the space because I mean ultimately you can you really can you can just go mad with what you change this is the blue room by the way I've decided it's the blue room and of course that carpet's in the wrong place so i'm going to drag it down here i love it love it love it um you know so we could do like that uh dungeon designer dungeon interiors i think if you like that idea i kind of like that idea I actually do if you like that idea um you know drop a comment below let us know that uh, that would be something that you'd be you'd be interested in either watching or participating i don't know um to to really explore and and see you know how far can we push this aesthetic of uh, oh well I like what he's done with the corridors but I wouldn't have put the um, Iron Maiden in the corner I think it blocks the light coming in from that you know I mean I, I, I'm 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 it's just me I'm full of, of crazy ideas you know so so uh, it's something that I could I could see being quite quite fun uh, to do. And to to actually participate in as well, just to get feedback on one's maps and go, well, yes, people like that, or no, they didn't. Or um, let's see which way we're going here. This is the only thing that I would possibly change, uh, but again, it's trivial, it's minor. Um, is I'd like, and it might be as well. It might, you know, it's a key you press on the keyboard and you can rotate the object through the thread through those degrees. Um, but it's minor. I'm just being lazy, actually. Um, okay, so we put a torch in there. All right, so we're really done. We just got this last little room to fill in. Um, again, this is our sorcerer's space. He knows that uh, I've still got this mirroring thing happening. Um, 
which is actually proven quite useful now. Uh, but now I'm done with it, so we can turn that off. Um, yeah, this is the room that he's he's going to, I don't want to say entertain people in, but this is his private library, the upper level, um, and also the only way down into the, the lower level. Um, so that's important to realize that, uh, I think, is that, that this is this is the yeah this is the, the the way to get down into the actual tower itself so you've got to go through all of the other levels first uh before you get here um so i think that's important to think about from a designing perspective is uh, no it's 270 isn't it um yeah that's right i'll put that there and now this desk is now in the wrong place um, you see the torch is now underneath it and we don't want that we want the torch above it um right there we go okay good uh, and it needs a chair always needs a chair I, it is something that i find oftentimes when you look at maps is that they don't have the chairs there and you go well what do you want the chair for really to be perfectly honest with you what a chair does is it gives you a melee weapon doesn't it break the leg off and you've got a club um, use the entire chair to throw at somebody. Not a problem. Not not very difficult at all. I don't think um, to do that. So yeah, I I think that we often overlook um, basic basic things, which which have meaning that that um, or which had have, have a potential narrative value or a role playing value because we don't see it as as something that. Um, we don't see value. Your session has expired. Okay, log in. I was probably, I um, will confess, um, because of it being my birthday, I have had a lot of phone calls in trying to make this video. You know, usually I try and make these videos in one go so that you can see that I haven't spent 20 years uh, making the video and sort of saying, oh, well, you can, you can do it in five seconds. Um, I like to, I like to do it in real time. Um, but I have had a lot of phone calls today um, whilst doing these videos. So I, I have been in and out. Now, this grate that I'm putting here in this passageway, I'm putting it there because I don't think, I didn't think, and that's a silly idea. The grate is not what we need. What we need there is we need the hatch. So it allows us to do, 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 do. it allows us to put the hatch in place. Let's go to this corridor, go to the content, move the hatch under the torch. So that hatch allows us a quick escape down into that passageway to get maybe to the caravan or, or whatever the case might be uh, and go from there. Okay, so we are, as far as I can tell, we are done. Now, with the lighting, I actually want to go to our ground floor instead. So let's go to the ground floor. I'm going to turn off the top floor. Uh, I'm going to turn off the grid so you can see this. Now, look at what happens. We've got it lit as it would be during the day. Very nice. Very nice. There's some torches so we can see what's going on, but generally this is what it is like at daytime. We can now drop it down so it's nighttime and we can see that torch space. Look at how beautiful that looks. Look at that. I think that's stunning. That's absolutely stunning. We get a complete sense. Sorry, I'm whispering because it's nighttime. People are asleep. Um, we get a complete sense of what this space looks like uh, at night. Uh, I'm just going to change this quickly so that it looks more like stone. Um, but... Um, yeah, we now get a complete sense of nighttime. Now, of course, we we, we are underground um, down here. Um, but um, so we have to change the, well, we can change the ambient stage light down to that. So that is what our dungeon looks like. Well, down here, certainly. I think we can, we can drop that, drop that down. But... Um, 
you know, down here, that's what that looks like. Uh, this is what this looks like. This is what this looks like. It's so obvious to me. It's so clear. It's so, so... Um... Oh, let's just do that. Uh, it, it really is, in my opinion, a very easy way to create the most amazing maps. And we're not done. Now, I haven't saved this yet. I've actually been a little bit risky, uh, especially with the session timeout. So I haven't saved it. So we've got a three-level dungeon, which we have quite literally built in, I'm going to call it an hour and 15 minutes. I don't think that's bad. I don't think that's bad at all. Now you can see here, it's asking us which ones do we want to export? And do we want to show room numbers? Do we want to show hidden objects? Do we want to show traps? That's coming later. Our grid size, one inch is a block, an inch is the exact right size for your miniatures, by the way. So now you can just work your way through Master's Cottage. You can call this uh, first floor because this is the first floor. Uh, you can scale it however you like um, and uh, show grids if you want to. You can turn it off if you don't want it there. I quite like the grid being there, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but what I'm actually going to do, I think, I'm going to go back to the editor and I'm going to go to the grid. And here's my, my um, grid information. So I'm actually going to change this. I'm going to drop its opacity down to, I think... I think 40 is a good a good level. I think 40 is a good level. Um, I think that I think that's a pretty good space to be in. Um, let's go to the ground floor and uh, let's go to our grid. Show grid. Ah, show grid. And we said 40 was a good space. Ah, 40. Yeah, I think 40 is is pretty good for this uh, for this uh, amount of, of light. I'm just going to increase this ever so slightly so we get a bit more of what's going on. I'm going to come here and uh, go to grid, make that down to 40. And uh, drop this a little bit so it's not so bright. We don't want it to be that bright. And uh, yeah. Outside, of course, it doesn't really matter because we're not showing the stage here, so um, we can see the floor below. Okay, great, save that just very quickly. Da, 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 da. We're going to go through export. GM notes I'm going to go through in a different video because it's quite a different beast, and it's it's a remarkable beast as well. Okay, so Master's Cottage, we're going to call this uh, first floor, as I typed before, not exclamation. So first floor. And uh, first floor here, scale is at 100%, one inch, of course, uh, room numbers, grids, yes, great, and then export. Now, do you notice that you can save it as an SVG file? Now, if you don't know what an SVG file is, it's basically a vector-based uh, piece of information. So you can then take this and you can use it in other programs if you so choose, uh, which could be quite interesting. I haven't actually done anything with SVGs recently. I used to use them in a 3D, 3D program and we were doing visualizations of buildings. That was something that I did many, many, many moons ago. Um, but now if I open this up, I drag this, oops, I, oh, no, no, what am I doing? Oh, technology's failing me. I drag this over here. This is now my previewer. So this, this is, this is um, Windows Preview. So I can then zoom in. And the detailing that it's captured, I mean, it's absolutely phenomenal. The, 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 the information is all there. There is no doubt in my mind what this layer level is all about. It's as a, as a nice PNG, and now I can print it out. If I wanted to, I could print it out. Oh, I could save it as a PDF. I can take this over to whatever uh, program I want to to use it in. Um, oops, this should be called Ground Floor. Um, you know, whether it's Fantasy Grounds or Roll Twenty or wherever, um, it doesn't doesn't really matter. And let's do that. Exported that, and then the very last is the basement, um, and. I think, I think you would be done. All right, so now we've got all three. I think you would be hard pressed, really, really, really hard pressed to find a piece of software that's free. So it's three maps that are free, okay? Three maps that are free. You find three maps 
that you can open up now. I can go back here. I can change something. I can add something. Uh, this, as you can see, is a much bigger scale uh, map. This map took me about three hours to make. This is the ground floor, but it's a it's a castle, a complete castle. Um, to have that is phenomenal. And of course, then there's all sorts of other things that they're adding on and they're updating things as they go along. And one of the things that they have is you can share maps. So you can come in and get the rusty dragon in or other tombs and so on and so on. So they really are adding things. Um, they really are developing things. And these are a fantastic, fantastic bunch of guys. Uh, we've got them on Discord. You can come and chat to them on our Discord server. If you don't know about our Discord server, the link is below. You can go and check that out. Uh, go, come and join us. We chat. We do all sorts of weird and wonderful things. We run training, writing exercises, creative exercises. We share, we talk, we laugh, we sing, we drink occasionally. Um, but, you know, it's, it's Dungeon Fog is something that is going to be with us for a very long time because it does exactly what you need it to do. And if there's anyone who um, has any shadow of a doubt, uh, I think you'll find yourself sitting there going, I wonder why I ever thought it was wrong. Anyway, enough, enough gushing for me. If you haven't checked out Dungeon Fog, come along, have a look, www.dungeonfog.com. It's there, it's waiting for you to start creating your maps. And I I, I mean, this just looks fantastic. It looks, I, I, maybe not the architecture and maybe the layout of the room and you might be going, oh, green carpets, who buys green carpets? No, 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 no. But aside from that, if I were to hand these to my players, they'd look down and they'd say, where did you buy this from? Well, I didn't, I made it. And that is a fantastic feeling. And I made it to my story as well. I now know this map really, really well. Um, as I said, if you've watched this far in the video, head on over to www.greatgamemaster.com where you will find the this, uh, master's cottage map available uh, to all of you as a way of saying thank you for watching this really long video but also as a way of showing you just how easy it is and, and maybe you need a master's cottage um, that uh, will allow your uh, grand wizard to run around his tower and uh, cast weird and wonderful spells um, until next time I wish you and yours the very happiest of map making <laughs>